Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Check out our large assortment of logo merch and our lifestyle collection as well. Just head over to abvnetwork.com and click on shop. We are also sponsored by The Bar To Go. The Bar To Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar To Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar To Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. Finally, we are sponsored by the upcoming ABV Barrel Shop, a new liquor store experience coming to St. Louis, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop will serve as home to the ABV Network and will be owned and operated by Steve Akeley, Jim Fosnott, and Scott Creighton, a.k.a. the Barrel Buddies. To learn more about the investment opportunities in this new venture, listen to the ad at the end of this podcast. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we are completing a bracket challenge to determine which state we would like to get distribution in after our home state and Kentucky. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me welcoming my co-host Steve Akeley, along with our special guests Phil Collin, Lenny Eckstein, and Tim Swile. Hey everyone, hey, gang. what's hey. up? We doing? Oh, hey, pip pip. Hello. So, hey. Uh, yeah, we were supposed to have Weebrink here. He's a no-show. He could show up at any time, though. Uh, you know, maybe he sobers up and is like, oh, I got to get on there. So, yeah, we're just, just a warning. Weebrink may show up. I don't think he will, but uh, we'll leave it up. We'll leave the door open for him if, if he decides to make it. So, yeah, we've got a fun one today. We're going to be doing a bracket challenge to determine if we owned a bourbon company. And we got a couple of people here who do. Where <laughs> we want to go uh, after our home state, of course, uh, and, and the, you know, and the state where it's. So, like Lenny, we eliminated uh, uh we eliminated Philadelphia, and then we also, of course, eliminated Colorado too. So he 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 struck two out for us. So yeah, two for him. Yeah, yeah, two for with him. So, but we'll get to all those uh, logistics of how we're doing this after the break. For right now, I've got a question for you guys, and I don't know. Am I crazy? Does this? Uh, I don't know. It, it, my old age, I guess, is catching up to me, where I get angry at stuff that really you have no bearing on. It doesn't really impact me at all in any way, but it just makes me mad. So if you go up to Walgreens, say after seven o'clock. About 75 to 80 percent there are going to be in pajamas. And that's just you just have to deal with that, right? They, they wear those like fuzzy pants and, and literally slippers and a coat. And why is that? Are you angry about people being comfortable, Steve? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. This is a very specific thing to be upset about. You're upset about comfy people, pajama pants at Walgreens? Is that people wearing I'm... pajamas at Walgreens? Yeah. Walmart, I expect it. Walgreens, <laughs> I expect yoga pants. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about this is it the like the lack of effort to, to put on pants what yeah, is it I, I, well you? i think yeah there should be some standards so for instance you must wear shoes in, in a retail establishment must wear clothes actually not your pajamas i, I think the pajamas ah, so this is this for... is a bigger this is a bigger debate you do not consider pajamas everyday clothes you don't consider them do you yeah, I've never seen you walking around in your pajamas. Right. So I, I realize I'm a I'm an outcast on this. I, I don't like going outside in anything other than I'd be willing to like meet somebody in, you know, so I'd never step outside in my I feel awkward when I run down the end of the block to get the mail in my pajamas. So I'm not probably a good person to gauge on this. No, one. you I are because yeah, I, I would be the same way. I'm not gonna wear my pajamas out anywhere. I'm kind of insulted by anybody who even wears pajamas. <laughs> 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 wow! Uh, pajamas on. Yeah, that would be whatever you consider pajamas to be. So, I don't. Do you have lounging pants or anything like that? Whether that's just like dirty old sweatpants or or those comfortable flannel looking pants. That's something called my karate pants. I don't know why we call them that. I think it looks like I belong in a dojo wearing them, and I'd uh -huh. never wear those out to uh, the, the the bank to post yeah. office to. to... Right. Now, what what if you ran a convenience store? 
Would you have a dress code, Steve, that would prohibit people from wearing? Yes, yeah. It would be Upscale uh, Convenience Store. That would be the name of it. It would be called the Upscale Convenience Store. And yes, it would be like Studio 54 out there. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> okay, you're okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're okay. Nope, not you. No, go home, change. What a god-awful business model. <laughs> well, I don't know. What are you going to do? The, or it could be the world's best business model. Maybe people are in there like, this is refreshing. People are actually clothed in here. It's nice. Would you I tolerate would, sweats? I would shop there. What's that? Would you tolerate sweats? Like sweating? That's 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 you know grayer, right? that's that's a little bit grayer. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that either. Actually, because uh, there's never a time when I see someone walking into the grocery store, some some fat dude walking into the grocery store and he's got sweatpants on. I never think you're a slob. I never not think, hey, you're a slob. I or, think or, you're you're an absolute slob, my friend. Nor do you probably think they just got off the basketball court. No, I don't think that yeah, at all. Like I've never seen ball. anybody who looks like they would be could even play basketball in sweatpants. At a, and if I did, I would be like, oh, that's cool. Maybe they are coming from the gym on the way home. I would be okay with that. But that's not the people I see in the sweatpants going into the grocery store. So, Steve, uh, it must really tick you off when you go to an airport. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Same gosh. thing. Yeah. Oh, and and I, don't, I don't like any of that. I will it, agree with that. It, it is sad that there's been a very steady decline in, like, people – either dressing up too, there's also like this weird thing where people are dressing up too much for some things or they're like right. very much not even in a, attempting to look presentable in a an out like in just a regular setting outside their home like they're Becca, does, right. Becca, you got a good point there because i do get angry at that too someone was like well i'm flying i gotta wear a sports coat today no you don't you can you can you can just wear a regular shirt you can wear your jeans and you can go on. You don't have to w wear something fancy to fly. But I, so that, that angers me too. That's the other end of the spectrum. I yeah, guess I Fridays, really, I'm just getting angry. Fridays through an airport. Fridays through an airport, the corporate issued uniform are khakis, loafers, a <laughs> light blue shirt, and a navy blue blazer with gold <laughs> buttons. It is ridiculous. You could, yeah. I, I wish I got a penny for every douchebag wearing that outfit on a Friday yeah. in traditional business travel, not COVID post whatever this is going to be business travel. Yeah. Uh, but I agree with you there. What I can't stand those folks wearing shorts or I hate to say it, flip flops on a uh, plane. Cause you know, those are coming off and they're your they're foot's getting off. put up next yeah. to somebody. Yeah. Oh, that's Lenny. Lenny's pointing to himself. Yeah. That's disgusting. I absolutely but, did that yesterday. Okay. Yeah, that's as long as you keep your feet down is fine. When I see them off the corner of my eye by my head, I consider that a potential problem. What if oh, someone was if, if clipping if their toenails? On, my toes are going up. So that I don't wear flip-flops on a plane. I always wear shoes. But like if I, I, I just can't help it. So I just wear shoes that I will not be able to take off on the plane because otherwise I will take my shoes, my shoes off. I can't help myself. So I just <laughs> wear my boots that I can't take off, and then you're not gonna see my my feet out because otherwise I'll do it. Steve, I have a I, I have a two part follow up question for you. One, sure. how do you how do you feel? Where do you land on jeggings? And two, do you know what jeggings are? <laughs> no, I don't know what jeggings are. So I have no idea. They're like very tight. They're, they're they look similar or they feel similar to wearing leggings, but they're kind of a jean ish material. From a distance, oh. they might appear to be jeans, but in reality, oh. all they are is fancy leggings. Yeah, I don't. So really you, like you that might either. can fool people with thinking that you're wearing. High end, tight, fashionable jeans, but they're really just leggings. How would you? <laughs> would people in jeggings be allowed in your in your convenience? Uh, the, again, that's 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 on par with sweatpants in my mind. So yeah, it's a step above pajama pants, but not you're not actually dressed. Actually, I would say that the only major offense in my mind is wearing um, patterned like pajama pants to the airport and like just around in general. Like if they're you're wearing just regular black pants that are sweatpants or like just regular gray pants and like they're not like cut weird or anything like that, that I can deal with that. But when it's like they've got Garfield all over them, <laughs> you're wearing those around. Then I'm, a, I'm immediately offended the, the, unless you're in a house. The plush slippers in the front, but it's like a, a slipper you slide your foot into. Th those are literally slippers. They're not, they're not, they're not flip-flops. They're not, they're not for outdoor shoes, wear. Shoes. They're yes. not for outdoor wear. No. And, and, but that's what you'll see them in, uh, you know, at the airport, grocery store, uh, Walgreens. Well, I, I think there, there, may be an, well, there may be an age requirement where that may be somewhat acceptable. If you are pulling a paycheck and receiving a W-2 <laughs> and have to file taxes, that shouldn't be happening. 
<laughs> you can afford a pair of shoes. <laughs> okay. 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 If you're, if, but if, if you're a child and you're, you're old, running around. 14, and, fine, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But Tim, to your point, I sort of blame parents across the board, be it for adults that never learned or like my kid, he does not go out in public wearing pajamas. I have to draw a line and say, no, dude, if you're going to do it now, what's going to stop you from being that person in Walgreens doing it? in? Yeah, years? aggravating Steve. Yeah, you don't exactly. need that. <laughs> yeah. have the that. last thing we want to do is aggravate Steve. No, no, it's true. no one wants that. Don't poke the bear. So I don't know. I feel like. You guys were oddly supportive of me on this one. I don't know that you're like, you would be like, hey, I walk away. And, 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 but it feels like uh, you, you you might not be as adamant as me, but uh, you do kind of think the same. And it sounds like you all actually wear clothes that are appropriate. It's Indeed. So, you, I mean, not you're, you're, you're falling low, in line, either, whether you like to like it or not. Phil's it's a like, low bar, know. but I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. No, but he's like, oh, I don't dress that way. That's I do have cool. a sign attached to my mirror in the bathroom before I leave the home that says pants as kind of a reminder every day. So <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> The only time I, I deviate from that, I because I my dad did this to me growing up, uh, the Christmas photos. I always uh, like to wear uh, a robe and look like shit because that's where every whenever I think of Christmas, opening up gifts, I think of my dad in that robe <laughs> and hair all messed up, and I think I got to give my kid that same experience. I got to I got to look like shit. I can't be like, oh, I'll, let me shower first. Be even though she comes over later, she doesn't live at home, so she comes home. Uh, later on Christmas Day, and we open up stuff. I still have that look on because I feel like that's how a dad should look in your Christmas photos that you're going to look at back at years from now. Well, there's a whole other topic. When is it appropriate <laughs> to take off your bathrobe? What hour of the day should the bathrobe not be out in the uh, in the open? Yes. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, that's. I, I agree that's, with you on that one, Steve. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's part of the fun of uh, yes. The Christmas photos are, are something unique for sure. All right, gang. It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? I'm going to go first. I've got a three seven five bottle here. This is the bottled and bond uh, corn whiskey from Silverback Distillery. Let's see what we got here. That's Ooh. solid. That's really good. That could be enough to win. We will see. We're going to let Lenny go next. What do you got, Lenny? I've got some uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Okay. No, no. Typical. Not enough. Not enough. Tim, how about you? Uh, it is, while we're recording this, it is the season for special whiskey. So I'm dipping into my Yellowstone Limited Edition from 2016. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, not enough to, to overtake me. Okay. Uh, Phil, you're next. Butcher, baker, candlestick maker. I got just the everyday bakers here from our fine friends at Jim Beam. Oh, so quiet. Yeah, quiet. Not, not much there. Rebecca, last one to go. She's back. She, she ran away. I think she forgot her whiskey tonight. So she she to took off her pajama back. pants and put proper yeah. pants on. Yes. She's got, yeah, I'm after like, that. We're podcasting. I better wear proper pants. <laughs> um, I have got some Kentucky Peerless here. This one is. The walnut old fashioned. Walnut old fashioned. Okay. A little bit left. No, no, not enough. Not, not enough. enough. I take it. I take it. So cheers, gang. Cheers. Cheers. All right. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about this what state we'd like to go for after our home state or where we're based out of. So we'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley of the ABV Network. Let's talk about the people who make this show happen. First up is Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Company founder Andy Lang started distilling as a hobby while serving his country as an elite Green Beret. Andy distilled all over the world during his time in the military and brought this passion back to him in the U.S. when he returned home. A visit to Leatherwood combines Andy Lang's unique distilled spirits and a museum of artifacts from his time serving the U.S. Share a drink with a fallen soldier at their bar where you can grab an acrylic bio off the wall that celebrates the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect his or her country. They will also ship their distilled spirits directly to you, so check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com. We are also sponsored by Moonshine University. 
This longtime partner for the ABV Network helps educate individuals looking to get into the distilled spirits business, service industry employees looking to expand their knowledge, and individuals simply wanting to know more about the process and history of the spirits industry. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification at Moonshine University, and it's something I continuously draw upon and connect with fellow graduates. Check out their full listing of classes, including Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, production classes, and more at moonshineuniversity.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows, and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. All right, back to the show. Hi, this is Mr. Bill. You're listening to Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're going to figure out what state we'd like to distribute in. Yes, we are. So, um, Phil's got ties to so many states, I didn't uh, really ding him for anything. I'd uh, like a sailor from port to port. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the states that got eliminated were Missouri, North Dakota, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Colorado. Uh, our contenders, these are our top contenders here, New York, Ohio, Indiana, New Mexico, Texas, Michigan, Louisiana, and Georgia. Georgia, Phil's actual home state there. He made it. So oh, I didn't I know realize that until I talked with him. Where did you get this list of contenders? I think it's the best whiskey states. Other than uh, New Mexico, that's on there because of Luke Otero is the distributor there. I always think <laughs> I would go to that state because he would do such a good job representing my brand. So it made the list, thanks to in large part, to the work of uh, Luke Otero. So very uh, good. Go. Good. Yeah. good answer. Yeah. I mean, he, he is, he learns the product inside and out represents it, goes out and uh, he seems beloved there. I mean, he does a great job. So uh, he's killing it. He's got two big accounts already. He has a third one signed on, which we're not allowed to talk about. I'll talk about it all to you guys though, off the air. Eh, maybe Ooh, no, I, won't, Luke. I wouldn't tell him anything, Luke. Eh, I'll tell you guys. Shh. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, so here we go. It's going to be Ohio versus Michigan, New York, Indiana, Georgia versus Texas, New Mexico versus Louisiana. Round number four, Tim, you are first Ohio oh. or Michigan. Two of Who's the worst. Round four. Yeah. I heard round four. Round one, I heard round four too. Round one, right? Round uh, one. Oh, you know, Ohio is the unscented candle of the United States. <laughs> um, Michigan, <laughs> Mich Michigan is the tidy whities of the United States. Both are control states, if my memory serves me right. Um, yes. Well. All I hear about Michigan is how hard it is to get there and that Michigan laws suck. Uh, but I don't hear that about Ohio. I have to go with Ohio. Okay. All right, that's a, probably a good way to look at it. Ohio goes up one nothing. Phil, what do you think, Ohio or Michigan? You know, my take is kind of the same as Tim, and I think they both have somewhat trouble getting access to a wide variety of bourbons. But the bitching from Ohio is just incessant when they come down to Kentucky and they point to any bow on the shelf, and then they complain about uh, they can't get it, and it comes in, and it goes. Uh, so to appease these people and to make my life easier, I'm going to vote to get better distribution in Ohio. Those oh, Michiganers wow. seem pretty chill about stuff. They're going out up north and going to the lakes and they get over it. Ohio. Ohio. That means Ohio is quickly up to nothing. Lenny, what do you think? Ohio or Michigan? I mean, my take is going to be more surrounded on what I would do from uh, my own brand perspective. Um, I feel like Ohio, I, well, I think Kentucky would be an obvious move, although I haven't done it yet. And Ohio is really close. So I'd probably not do Ohio. Michigan also seems to have an affinity for Colorado. They like to ski on our mountains versus their own. Okay. Um, also, I feel like Michigan, I don't know. I know Ohio has some nice things to check out, but you know, you know, me and activities and I, I feel like there's more in Michigan. So I'm going to go on distributor trips and hang out. Uh, okay. I think Michigan would be a fun state. Michigan. That means Michigan has life in this game. Suddenly Miss Becca Sue, you're next Ohio or Michigan. Where are you taking your product? So we're right next to Ohio, right? Uh, they can just drive down here. Relatively easy to get our product. 
Um, but we get a ton of people down here from Michigan too. Like we get a you lot. You do have a lot of people. Of I, I've been there many times. And there's been people from Michigan. At your we place. get a ton Weird. of business from Michigan and all, all of it pretty much, not, not all of it, but I'd say that like 85% of the business we get from Michigan is so-and-so told me and so-and-so told them and so and and it is, there is so much word of mouth up there with us, I guess, that I'd say Michigan because Michigan loves us. Mm -hmm. So I'm going Michigan because the Ohio people, they can come see us easy. Okay. But Michigan, yeah. they, I mean, they, they love us up in, up in Michigan. So I'm going with uh, the people that love us. All right. Yeah, these are tough. I kind of look at these two states, even though they don't like each other. I look at them as exactly the same. I really don't have any interest in either of these states. <laughs> uh, you're talking about the bottom. They're in the bottom 15 of places where I'd like. If you, I always like to think at some point I need to rank all the states where I live. And these are these are a couple of bottom dwellers here. You're offending um, so many people. It's I awesome. Know. I don't millions, know. millions and oh. millions. I mean, they, don't talk, they, don't, they don't talk crash. about Missouri. I, it's not like they're like, oh, we love Missouri until now. This guy said, no, they don't say that. <laughs> I, I mean, I like these states. I like the people from them. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I like to visit. I don't, I just wouldn't want to live there. I would, I don't know why. I, and I actually don't actually know how they can get anybody to live in either one of these states. Uh, how does that happen? I, my, my number one goal would be from the day I was born to be, how the hell do I get out of here? Chamber uh, of Commerce from Ohio called. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Step into my office, I think, man. You're I think I'm going to go Ohio, though. I think I think Ohio uh, has. I think it seems to be better, bigger cities. I think that, that that's the opportunity. You're not it's, Becca's talking Cincinnati, which is great, but then you got Columbus, you've got uh, Cleveland. I think there's I think there's a better opportunity to to really make some work there. So I'm going to go Ohio, meaning Ohio moves on. All right, New York versus Indiana. New York versus Indiana, round number two. New York versus Indiana, Phil, you're first. I think this one's an easy one. I think there's a, a type of uh, cachet and, uh, you know, uh, not to mention a huge population to be in uh, the Empire State. So uh, New York over Indiana is my vote. All right. That means uh, New York goes up one nothing. Lenny, what do you think? New York or Indiana? Yeah, I feel bad dissing any state for the most part, except for uh, Missouri. Um, but <laughs> this show turned into what states do we hate the most today on the ABV network? I hate any the great thing about Missouri is we know no one else likes us. We only like it. So we're like, yeah, that's good. It's not like no, we like have a Missouri deep too. secret where everybody wants to get there and it's like, oh, we're bummed. No, we're not. You don't want to be here. We don't want you to be here. It's fine. <laughs> uh, no, I like Missouri. I, uh, I think that there might be another state on this list, but there's definitely states when you think who ha who has cocktail culture cornered oh, yes. um, and you can't talk about that without talking about New York. Um, also, I think I could conjure a pretty solid New York accent when needed. It's not too different than a Philadelphia accent. It's pretty different, but it's close enough. Um, so I would say New York. I think it just New makes York. sense. New York versus Indiana. All right. All right. Miss Becca Sue. You are next. New York or Indiana? New York is up to zip. I'm going New York on this one. New York. That means New York moves on. For the record, I do like both of those states. They're both good states. All right. Next up is uh, Georgia versus <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Georgia versus Texas. I also like both of these states, by the way. These are good ones. Uh, Lenny, uh, you're up first. Georgia or Texas? All right. Well, one of my distribution goals is uh, states that are uh, not cold as shit in the winter and I can drive to. And uh, Texas is on the list of states I can drive to. Um, it's huge, which is a challenge because I actually looked at going to Texas and uh, our distributor wanted so much product that we had to back away. And I was like, I don't, I don't have that much. I guess <laughs> right. we're not going into Texas. Um, but with a small distributor, I think it could be pretty awesome. You know, there's some pretty neat cities. There's coast and I can drive to it. So Okay. Texas. That means Texas goes up one nothing. Next up is uh, Becca. I'm going Texas. Texas loves us too, so we do well in Texas. So I, they've tried to get us down there too, but you know we're just not right now. Yeah. We're not going to be doing that because yeah. <laughs> Texas is huge. Georgia so. versus Texas. Uh, this is again tough one. I like them both, but I am going to go Texas. I like warmer weather and uh georgia's okay but uh, there's some cold parts there so i like uh, i like texas better so new mexico versus louisiana this is an interesting one round number four miss becca sue you're first new mexico or louisiana 
I love Luke. Um, but because we have absinthe, I feel like we probably do really well in Louisiana with our absinthe. Um, so I think, I think because of our absinthe, that's why I'd go with Louisiana. Yeah. I feel like these are both relatively smaller States. Uh, Louisiana has got some, but again, I don't know that they're a huge, if I, I'm wanting my bourbon to go there. Uh, I think that Luke is a difference maker for me. So I'm going to go Luke and I'm going to go New Mexico here. So we're tied up one, one, New Mexico and Louisiana. Uh, Tim, you're next. What do you think? New Mexico or Louisiana? You got the state with bourbon streets. You got the cocktail <laughs> culture in New Orleans, but outside of that, that's really about it. I'm kind of thinking, okay, where can I get something on the shelf? That's going to move to a population that I know it's going to potentially attract New Mexico with a distributor that, has your product knows and is going to sell the heck out of it to get it on shelves. Prob- Where am I going to move more product if I'm, if I'm sitting in my, my business hat on? Um, yeah. I think, I think you're going to move it across the whole state. Whereas Louisiana, you're going to be a, a another don't, don't influence him. Let the man vote That's, how he wants to vote. He ultimately gets to vote how he wants. I have to play the role of host on this film. So yeah, I don't I know how to, much I, have to play I, both sides. I don't know how much Boulevardiers or uh, old fashions or Cesaracs are drinking Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, I got to go to New Mexico. I'm going to I'm going to take a flyer on New Mexico and make a business uh, risk on that one and see where that one rolls. Okay, New Mexico is up two to one. Phil, you're next. This is easy for me. Uh, the Battle Rose, uh, Zoot the Lore, uh, Le Trumpet, Bo- the Louisiana. I think that's uh, the, the better culture uh, to get your product in um, from Bourbon Street and beyond. So I think the let's go to the Bayou. Bayou All Bourbon. Right. All right. Well, uh, I, I, you thought I was probably from New Orleans with that accent. Yeah, no, well, not at all. I, no. I was, Lenny, I was it's kind of like Lenny's New York accent. No, it's still yeah. not New York accent. Yeah. Nah, okay. You're no, still from Philly. No. <laughs> All right, Lenny, what do you think? New Mexico or Louisiana? I mean, I think well, I think Louisiana, New Orleans, New Orleans fits in that conversation of you know top cocktail culture uh, states in the well or, or cities in the country. Um, but I can get to New Mexico in like three hours if I drive fast, maybe less. Um, I think there's some cool stuff in New Mexico, cocktail wise, like Santa Fe and distillery wise, like Santa Fe Spirits with their uh, Cal Keegan lineup of American single malt. They're doing neat things there. Uh, Albuquerque obviously has some stuff. And I feel like there's some Southern New Mexico spots that are like yet to be discovered. They probably won't for another 10 years. Um, I don't know. I I, I do like it down there. Also, um, I don't know. Yeah, Luke. Holler at your neighbor in the north. There you go. New yeah, Mexico I'll moves to New Mexico. On. That sounds awesome. Mexico moves on. You should definitely be in contact with Luke. Why don't, I, I should. Don't go I, I feel like should. I've been meaning to. I just haven't done it. There you go. All right. Round five. I'm going to be up first. Ohio versus New York. Uh, again, I think this is eh, Ohio. Ohio does consume a lot of bourbon. They, they are big drinkers and if they do travel down to Kentucky. Boy, you, you never. Not popping into someone that's from there, um, but New York so so big. Like I said, great cocktail culture there. This is a tough one, but because I do think they're both great bourbon drinking states, I'm going to go New York though. So New York for me, Tim, you're next. Uh, I'm going to zag with you on this one because I think with New York, with the most distilleries right now in the nation. You've got a lot of product flowing in there that's homegrown. You've got a lot of product that's trying to get in there. Um, Ohio wants to come down and and, uh, and get the whiskey wherever they can. They can get it on their shelves, assuming the local government allows that to happen. Yeah, uh, I think sense. you have uh, you've got an opportunity to potentially get more volume out of Ohio than New York because you're just fighting for shelf space. I'm going to go Ohio, keep it Fair alive. Enough. And I enough. cannot believe I'm saying that. I'd rather get Fair hit enough. by a car than go back to Ohio. But uh, <laughs> Ohio, you got my vote. That's All right. they need alcohol there. There you go. That's right. Phil, you're next. We're tied up 1-1, one, one, New York and Ohio. What are you liking here? Yeah, Tim Zig Zag Zag. He zops up, up left and right. I'm going to uh, New York. I think um, you know the concentration of uh, bars and liquor stores and restaurants um, kind of usurps the um, overabundance of distilleries in the state. I think it makes it a really attractive market with a, with a great ease to kind of uh, have a lot of opportunity to get your product in different places. All right, Lenny. Vote for 
Oh, I'm going to give you guys a, a unique angle on this one. So you might or might not be aware. So a distillery like mine in Colorado, we can't ship direct to consumer. Um, we can ship to distributors and distributors can ship to liquor stores. Because of some... Colorado state law? Y yeah, it is. Okay. So while, right. you know, Kentucky allows distilleries to ship out to states that allow it. There's a weird thing out there that uh, I certainly wouldn't want to draw too much attention to, but I like it. And so that is the that podcast. Thing. Sounds like but, a hey, grand plan. Hey, it sounds like a viable thing to do. That's right. I, I, I'll draw some attention. Uh, so there's a few states out there, uh, California being one, New York being one, where retailers don't give a fuck, and mm -hmm. they'll ship to anyone, pretty yeah. much any state. Uh -huh. And since I'll drop, New York I'll drop is names. There's there's one called Fi Dye Liquors, and I've looked at their site. It's Financial District Liquors in New York. I've looked at their site a million times. I'm trying to find these restrictions they have to ship bottles. They don't care. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> but and get your bottle care, tomorrow, wherever you are. I'm like, how do you do that? Yeah, well, they do. I think you so, don't care about the law. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty simple. When's the last time you heard sell a liquor store getting busted for sending out alcohol? Never. Mm -hmm. I've never have. I, I, we've got some that do in Missouri. The law is you can't ship in Missouri. They they do it. They do it on their website. Buy it on the website. Ship it out. The, it's, I, I, you know, at some point, they'll crack down. At some point, it'll be, and, and then, then it'll stop. But for right now, I think it's the Wild West. Go ahead, Lenny. Sorry. Uh, I mean, that, that was about to just say. I mean, I got for, all for like, breaking law when it comes to my own self, you know, like speeding or I don't sure. know, jaywalking, meth, whatever, but, <laughs> but, I, but I, but I will not ship my product to someone right. directly. Yeah. So yeah. by going into New York, it, we're already in California. And as I always talk about, like, I love it when people order direct from our website, it ships from California. If I go into New York, then it can ship from either state, whichever's closest. So New York it is. All, All right. That means New English. York will move to the finals. No Next up, round number six, Texas versus New Mexico. Again, uh, up first is going to be Tim. Tim, let's not forget, we're talking about craft distillery. We're not talking about Four Roses looking at their second distillery. We're talking about a craft distillery looking at their second state they're going to go to. So that's that's what we need to also frame this as we look at this. Texas versus New Mexico. Go ahead, Tim. You're definitely going to be uh, having uh, Luke receive a lot of phone calls because that's exactly where I was going. The last time Texas came up, our own distillery friends said, I just can't have enough product to meet that demand, this, that, or the other. I need to be able to turn whiskey over and keep it going so I'm not blowing out my operations and not having products because I think you put your own problems at your own distillery. If you can't get product to places, then you lose your own customers. But I'm going to look to expand. New Mexico may be a nice avenue to go to. Okay. New Mexico. Next up, Phil, Texas yeah. or New Mexico? You know, it's funny. I could make a case both for and against Texas, but yeah, I'm feeling wishy washy. So right now I'm going to make a case against Texas. And the little I know about liquor law and liquor distribution is Texas really plays by their own set of rules. They have different things that have kept big liquor stores out. Uh, from operating, they they have I think, and and someone can email or correct me if I'm wrong. The you know you got the three tier system. They have this mystery bonus fourth tier. To get your product. I'm not I'm not making that up to get your product. Bonus Texas. fourth tier. Yeah. Uh, Lenny looks like he has something to say on that. No, I, I can't comment too much, but enough to the extent that when I looked at going into Texas, I was completely perplexed by what they have going on, where bars have to buy from the liquor stores or something to that effect. There's there's a weird layer. So, so for okay. all of these very reasons, I'm, I'm going to go with New Mexico. New, New sounds, Mexico. The land of enchantment sounds like a more pleasant place to get my product into. All right, Lenny, Texas or New Mexico. These are two potential ones for you here. Yeah, th this is a tough one. I think I'm going to angle this one towards, um, God, I, I would say it really depends on the distributor, especially for a small brand. Um, the upside of Texas is that there are, while it's huge and a small distillery like my own certainly could never cover the whole state, there are really nice pockets that you could say, well, I'm going to go to this college town or, you know, or maybe Austin, even though that's a monster in itself. Yeah. You um, get the right distributor, you could grow the business with that distributor. Yeah. That'd yeah, be cool. I mean, but. It, it really comes down to, from my perspective, how many cases do I have to sling around to different markets? And if it's, you know, a pallet here and there to Texas, perfect. Whereas uh, if a distributor in New Mexico said, I'll well, take a quarter pallet and then maybe we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I do love New Mexico. I think it's a cool state. I actually lived there briefly, worked at the zoo. Very fun job. Um, <laughs> it's been a very uh, small yeah. zoo. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a neat little complex. But, um, you know, while New Mexico is a more likely scenario for Deerhammer, I do think Texas holds more intrigue for most distilleries because of its potential. So I guess I'm going with Texas. I don't know. Yeah. That's a weird one. 
you guess you're going to go. So is that not very official? non-committal on my part? But yeah, see. yeah. Are you locking it in? I guess. <laughs> Good dance the line, Lenny. Nice job. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice show. Nice some work. true conviction. Yeah, nice work. We're not. You're not an industry spokesperson here. Yeah, you're you know, Lenny, but yeah, go ahead. That's fine, Miss Becca. So here's where we're at. New Mexico is up two to one over Texas. What do you think? Then you have to vote. Yeah. Um. So New Mexico is up two to one to Texas. Um. I know that we, I mean, we'd, we'd probably do good in both markets. I mean, we, I, we don't see, we, we'd only go, do good in New Mexico because of Luke. We do good in Texas because we get a lot of Texans up as well. Like we get, it's Michigan and Texas and Florida are our main ones that we get up to the distillery and of, of people asking for us to be in their state too. Um, and so I know that we do fine in Texas, but it, it definitely wouldn't be a, burden to be in texas huh interesting um because because of demand i mean it, it's just we're only so big you know um but regard i mean god you know we talked about like dealing with the distributor if they're just you know pestering us all the time about getting more things because they are selling out so fast that's also a pain in the ass frankly um you know what? We're just going to close this one out with New Mexico because dealing with a distributor like Luke, who I think would understand when there's things like bottle shortages and stuff like that, I think he'd be more understanding where it's like, okay, yeah, so we, we just won't get that this month. That's fine. And I think that he'd be more understanding and easier to deal with. And that's who we deal with. So we're going to go to New Mexico on this one. So you're talk- looking at, uh, you know, one of the biggest states in the United <laughs> States, New York, will now take on one of the smaller states in the U.S., New Mexico, uh, in our finals. Round number seven. Phil, you're going to be first to weigh in on this one. What do you think? Would it be New York or New Mexico? Are these the only two states in the union that have new in their name? Have we matched the only new states? Nope. Uh, new Hampshire. <laughs> new Hampshire. Yeah. Oh, right about new Hampshire. Oh, yeah. Old Hampshire. Oh, you just insulted the whole population of New Hampshire. Yeah, now did. New Hampshire's manager. Yeah. Yeah. All all six, your hats in the ring, too. All, all 680,000 of them. I'll deal. That's right. <laughs> another, another <laughs> He'll answer every one of those emails. <laughs> I, as they come I, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that bastard! I want to let him know a piece of my mind. <laughs> for, for all the reasons I said before, I'm I'm sticking with the girl I brought to the dance. I'm saying New York. Sticking with New, New York. York. New York. Uh, New York goes up one nothing over New Mexico. Lenny, you're next. New Mexico or New York? And I mean, I, I think this is a tough one to answer because I think I'm gonna email Luke tomorrow morning and uh, have a chat with him and see if I can't get something going. Right. But at the same time, I do have plans to go into New York already. So uh, I think New York might happen sooner. So I guess I'm going to go with New York from a perspective of, yeah, you know, if I had to say where Deer Hammer will be next, it'll probably be New York. New York. Ah. Okay. There you go. Wow. That's scoop on the show. Yeah, right. So, so New York is quickly up uh, two to nothing. Miss Becca Sue, you're next. New York or New Mexico? Um, let's go with, oh, geez. New York or New Mexico. Let's go New Mexico on this one. New Mexico. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is a simple one. Uh, this is probably one of the easiest bracket challenges we've ever had. It's New Mexico, 100%. If you're in whatever state you're in, if I had a Missouri this distillery or, 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 you, or you have Kentucky, absolutely. No, it's not. It's 100% true. Your second state you ever go to, you want to go to New York, the Big Apple, the the biggest, the, the, the state that has the biggest city uh, you know, in the United States? No way. No way. I, I, I want to get there. I'd love to be there. And matter of fact, if I suddenly was able to turn it on, I'm wilderness trail. And I, you know, I keep it until I've got bottled and bottled and I got all the whiskey in the world. And it doesn't matter how much it costs me to say, yeah, I, I'd love to have New York picks, but I'm going through the eyes of most distilleries, I think. And I think it's an easy way to dip your toe in. I think it's a small state. I think you can really do good there though. I think you've got the right, uh, right uh, uh, partner in Luke. And I think, that this is a slam dunk. This is, you know, hey, because first time you go out of your state, that's a big deal for a distillery. That's 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 a totally different thing. And I think it's an easy way to do it. Someone who's going to know your product, have the best. And I think New Mexico should be where everyone wants to go. And they want to go with Luke Otero. Uh, this uh, show paid for by Luke Otero Enterprises. <laughs>
Check out LucoTarot.com for more information. No, I, Luke has nothing to do with this. He doesn't even know we're doing it. So, uh, so here's where we're at. We are tied up 2-2. Two, two. It's going to go to Tim. Tim, what do you think? New York, the Big Apple, the place where everybody wants to be, obviously. You want to be in Times Square with a billboard at some point, I would think, if you've got a brand. But is New Mexico the better call here? I don't know. You tell me. It's your decision. Oh, I think you absolutely do know, Steve. You're just playing coy. Um, so... <laughs> If, if you got to have economies of scale in order to be able to hit the New York market. The first thing I think about is I can, I can see sitting at the Flatiron Grill at uh, PJ Clark's or something like that in, in, in Manhattan, and I have a wonderful distillery product mixed in my old fashioned, and I went to go to the liquor store to go get it. Oh, no, no, that's allocated already. What do you mean it's allocated already? You can't get, I can't get this. What do you mean I can't get this? Now I'm paying up on the secondary market left, right. And that money is not getting back to the distiller and you become that person. That's what I see potentially happening in that craft scene. And then all of a sudden that product gets lost. Uh, I think if you're stretching out, if you're a craft distiller, you're stretching out, stretching your legs in a New Mexico market or a market where you can get a distributor and then you get the accolades from that, that distributor as well. Talking to other distributors, if you need referrals to get into other markets, I I think that does carry some weight if I'm starting out trying to get my product on shelves, knowing I've got limited um, products. I got to go to Mexico. As much as I hate I want to see the big dollars and the bright lights in the big city. I I think New Mexico is the route to go if I need to stretch my legs and get that, get my legs from underneath before I can really start sprinting. I agree. In a fantasy scenario, it's, this is a slam dunk. It's New York all the way, but Yep. That's a tough market to, you know, to get into, to feed. Uh, that's a lot. And, and then that's your second one. So you kind of get the home state down. And then you're, the way you're going to learn about other states is you're going to go to New York. That'd be tough. So I think New Mexico is a great call. That means New Mexico is our champion. Phil has uh, just hung up. He's done with the yes, I'm <laughs> crying my eyes out. Right. <laughs> Phil is just unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> He's unsubscribed. I just checked our subscriber count and we just lost one. I, it has to be Phil. The show isn't even published yet. So it has to be Phil. So, all right. We'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Tim, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on the uh, private taste and corporate events site at abvnetwork.com or on Instagram at swyguy2112. All right, Phil. This is exciting. This is the first time I've said part of this. So I'm on both uh, yeah, Twitter and Instagram at Derby City Phil, all one word. And you can uh, check out my fledgling business for all things whiskey tastings, uh, presentations, and more. Uh, we have bourbon adventures at Phil Talks Whiskey. You can email me at phil, philtalkswhiskey.com. Whoo, I got to shorten that. That was too long. That was or good, though. That was good. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. Congrats. I've, I've already Thanks, got a group man. that's uh, booked one with Phil. They're they're in, interested and they like what he's doing, so yeah, they're going to be using them. So they're group good. of nudists, which I'm not comfortable they're with. Nudists, yeah, but what are you going to do? That. What are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. Clean the seats. <laughs> Lenny, how about you? Where can people find you? Now, people can find myself in Deerhammer on social media at Deerhammer on the webs at deerhammer.com where you can also order our bottles shipped directly to you soon to ship directly from New York, I think. <laughs> um, and you should totally come to this in beautiful Buena Vista, Colorado. That was also too long. All right. Not at all. Like a Sue. You can find me at Neely Family Distillery. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue, 1K, no C's. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find a Matt Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that company website, abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, our shop. Check it out, abvnetwork.com. Ms. Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I just like to remind the audience to please give us a five star review that includes comments. It helps some people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you please visit us on Patreon at patreon.com backslash the ABV Network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye, hey, everyone. See, See ya. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, 
owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least, at the top of the show, I mentioned investment opportunities at the new liquor store concept, the ABV Barrel Shop, being launched in 2022 by myself, Jim Fosnott, and Scott Creighton. We are crowdfunding some of the capital needed to open the store. Not only does it offer a return on your investment, but a lifetime of status and benefits at the store. Of course, this investment is a loan and involves a high degree of risk, which may not be suitable for all persons. Prospective investors should carefully evaluate the risk and merits of an investment, should confer with their own legal and financial advisors, and should be able to bear the risk of the loss of their investment before considering the investment described herein. If you would like more information, contact us via the under construction website at abvbarrelshop.com and fill out the form. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.